What's up guys, this is Coach Phil with Ball 101 Basketball and today I wanted to go over what makes a complete basketball player. We believe it starts with the philosophy. What do you think the offense should do? What do you think the defense should do? Do you full court press like a team coached by Rick Pitino? Do you play half court D only like the Spurs? What position do you play? What are the responsibilities of your teammates? Who are you? What do you bring to the table? What does your coach and your team need from you? You're looking at a picture of Tony Allen, and the first word that comes to mind when you say Tony Allen is defense. He's a defensive first player, and choosing that path has served him well in his basketball career. The next thing you want to look at is skill set. Realistically, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? What do you bring to the team when you step onto the court? Kyle Korver is a big-time lights-out shooter. He has a pretty quick release on his shot. And his height, being listed at 6'7", affords him the luxury of shooting over defenders who are just a tad bit late on their closeout. His ball handling, defense, and rebounding are not why he's enjoyed a successful NBA career. But don't be fooled. Those skills are on a level that are more than acceptable for an NBA player that shoots like he does. There's a video on this channel titled Identity that explains these things in greater detail. In order to know who and what you are as a basketball player, I believe you ought to know what you believe and what skills you possess in many, if not all cases, one category influences the other and leads the basketball player to his or her identity. For example, if you believe that you're a certain kind of player and you don't have the skills to be that player, you work your tail off to become that player. On the other hand, if you realize that you excel in a certain part of the game or you excel in certain parts of the game, you base what you believe on your strengths. So in one case, the philosophy influences the skill set, and in the other, the skill set influences the philosophy, but you need both in order to create an identity. We move on to athleticism. Are you explosive like Russell Westbrook? Do you play steady and smooth all throughout the game like Luol Deng? Are you strong like Dwight Howard? Are you the one of a kind freak of nature given to the sport once a generation? How strong you are, how fast you are, how long you are able to play at a high intensity and perform at a high level, how agile you are, how explosive you are, these are all things that play a great role into how effective you'll be. If you have all of the skills in the world, but you can't perform them or you get tired too quickly, your skill set is absolutely useless. You don't have to be Russell Westbrook, but you can't be an offensive lineman and think that you're going to be successful playing basketball. We move on to experience and mental toughness. How many real, organized, and competitive games have you played in? How many close games and blowouts were you a part of? How many different referees have you dealt with? How many seemingly unstoppable ball players have you run into? How many dirty players have you had to deal with? How many heckling fans have you had to tune out? How many trash talking opponents have you had to shut down? How many of those trash talkers got the best of you? How many comeback victories do you have under your belt? How many fights have broken out during the game? How many times were there people in the stands that you were trying to impress? How many times did your shoes not fit well? How many times was the ball either too bouncy or too flat? How many times were you sick and still had to perform? How many times were the rims a little too tight? How many times were you sore from a workout that was two or three days before the game? These questions can go on and on, but the real question is what have you learned and how has your experience changed you and your game? Were you able to keep your cool? Were you able to keep your focus on winning the game? Did you give in to the trash talking and the flopping of the other team? Did the heckling fans cause you to shoot a bad shot? Did you celebrate a two-point lead with five seconds to go just to lose by a buzzer beat and three-pointer? Did you play with the same heart, effort, and enthusiasm in the fourth, down by five with 30 seconds to go, as you did at tip-off? And that brings us to the final piece of the puzzle, putting it all together. Can you adapt to what your team likes? Can you win your teammates over to what you like to do? Are you a team player or someone looking to fill the stat sheets? What decisions are you responsible for? Do you make those decisions well? Are you improving every year, every month, every week, every day? In your game, do you know which areas need more attention than others? LeBron James was not a shooter when he got into the NBA. Little by little, he improved his shot until it got to the point it has reached today. He, is he the NBA's best shooter? No. When you say LeBron James, is the first word that comes to your mind, shooter? No. But when he has the ball anywhere on the perimeter, he has the entire defense nervous because his shot is good enough to make his offensive move unpredictable. You don't know if he's going to pull up. You don't know if he's going to drive. It was a skill he wanted to add to become the most complete player he could become. And that's our recipe. 
your philosophy, your skill set, athleticism, experience and mental toughness, and how you put it all together. Yeah, it's a lot easier said than done, but this is what we believe it is. I hope this video helps you on your journey to become the best basketball player in person you can become. This is Coach Phil saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.